Hey guys, Steve from PC Budget Solutions here, and finally, finally, it's here. So, over here I have an Excel spreadsheet. I don't have all the numbers in yet, but um, we have the Ryzen R7 1700X versus the 4690K, which has been tested. The 4790K I will be doing here in a second, uh, but we have the benchmarks finally. Thanks again to Micro Center, and without further ado, let's take a look at the results. Okay, and we are finally here. So this is the Ryzen 7 1700X benchmarks. So I'm going to give you guys a quick overview of what we're looking at using here. Uh, obviously, the 1700X, everything's at stock to keep life easier. Uh, we have an Intel Core i5 4690K and my previous uh, 4790K as well. And then these are the test systems. My Ryzen system uh, is running an X. 370 Pro motherboard by Asus, uh, 16 gigs of DDR4 memory clocked at 2133. The, all of the systems are using my GTX 1080 for the win edition. Uh, 90, 90, 92 degrees Celsius is the maximum temperature target with 120% power. It's auto boosting just a hair over 2000 megahertz. Uh, power supplies the GE2 550 watt. And I'm using the MX300 SSD, it's one terabyte. Um, that's where everything's loaded on and I'm plugged into every system and they're all running Windows 10 um, The i5 system is running a MSI Z97 gaming 5 board 16 gigs of DDR3 memory at 1600 megahertz running XMP same GPU same SSD same overall operating system and my 4790k is on a Kraken X60 it is stock so it's not making a big difference EVGA Z97 board, same memory from the previous system, uh, same SSD, all that fun jazz. So these are the test systems uh, that we use you know, for all three builds. So just so you guys know, all the most important things were replicated here. So first game, GTA 5. I didn't realize, I had to go back through and do some retesting because some of the things were a little bit different. Um, so the Intel setups had a little bit different setting options, so I tried to mirror those. Uh, the 4790K won this one, average 85 FPS. The 4690K 81 and the 1700X at 77. Honestly, they're 10% behind the 4790K. Um, what I did like was the minimum FPS and the max FPS were a lot closer. Um, and this was run on pretty much very high settings, 1440p with no mo motion blur. So, next, Battlefield 4, or Battlefield 1, excuse me, we only had uh, two CPUs, my 4790K, there were some issues with it, it wouldn't, um, I don't know if it was loaded in my OS or what, but I wasn't able to get tested, um, but the 4690K had about a 6 or 7% average, higher, um, and, you know, what to be expected, uh, considering that the single thread performance is a little bit behind, but honestly, they're so close that it really wouldn't make a difference for me. Uh, Watch Dogs 2, so this was interesting. Um, my The um, Devil's Canyon chips fell behind. Uh, they had a much wider range of FPS for minimum maximum, and the average FPS, I mean, was heavily behind. We're talking 20% behind, even on the 4790K. So I noticed my experience with the 1700X was a lot better uh, across the board there. Uh, Fire Strike, 3D Mark, this is basically just the scoring. This was kind of interesting. Uh, the combo score fell behind on the 1700X. This is probably due to the memory controller not being able to put out the higher speeds, 2133 at higher latency. Uh, that definitely explains why that dropped. Uh, but the physics score, 1700X ran away with it. Pretty pretty easy for it. Um, next is going to be the 3D Mark um, Fire Strike and Time Spy. These are going to be the FPS results. Um, very similar story. Physics, the 1700X ran away with it. The other two, um, well, actually, the FPS, uh, physics FPS for Time Spy also ran away with it. The combo also fell on um, attributing this to the memory controller issue as well. So, still very, very, very impressive. I did not expect these results. Uh, and then this was the actual raw scoring. Um, the combo test and the CPU test, 
the 1700X won uh, pretty well across the board. So definitely expect to see that with the raw horsepower difference. And then lastly, this is a test a lot of people are waiting for. Um, I didn't run a lot of tests on my 4790K. We're having some big dip issues. Um, I would expect that the score may be a little bit higher than 4690K, 80 or 81 average. But literally, we're talking a 10% decrease in one of the most outlier games out there that require a ton of single thread performance with the way the game's engine's designed. 10% performance difference um, in a game like that is huge, especially with the lack of optimization and the memory issues and all kinds of things that need to be resolved. Um, you know, a lot of people are saying, what about World of Warcraft? Is this a good chip for it? And I'm going to say yes, based off the line streaming that I did the other day, and I'll put the link in the description below with that. Um, PvP, I was in 70 FPS plus on average. Uh, it was definitely pretty impressive. So, uh, so here's my conclusion here for you guys. Um, it is a good chip. It is a good buy. Should you get it over 7700K? that's going to be your call. The 7700K would probably do better than my chips, um, and especially because it's at a higher clock speed. Um, that being said, at 1440p, when you're a little bit more relying on the graphics card than the CPU in a lot of these games, and some of these games are multi-threaded, I don't think the 10 to 15% performance difference in a couple AAA titles is worth giving up the amount of raw power that you get from these Ryzen chips. That being said, there are a lot of there are several early adoption or adopting issues, the memory issue. I'm having voltage issues. Um, you know, I'm having a couple issues that will probably be resolved in the next couple weeks. But I would not run out and get a Ryzen chip right now due to that reason. Um, the single thread performance is solid. It's not as good as KB Lake, and it's not going to be good as the new upcoming uh, architecture Coffee Lake. Um, but it is good, and I think it's good enough. Uh, for now and I think the clock speed difference will help down the road whenever we can start getting these chips dialed in uh, and the multi-thread performance is on point as you saw all the CPU uh, physics scores benchmarks I mean I didn't do Cinebench but you guys have seen those results um, you know just is running away with it at a $400 chip so you know definitely something to consider I would wait a couple weeks if you're planning on buying a CPU wait till some things get fixed and worked on but I think this is a true contender for a good solid overall chip for the person that isn't just strictly playing single threaded high FPS games that want to do streaming that want to do video editing and want to do multitasking so that is my conclusion you guys I'm very happy with these results I'm very surprised with these results as well but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and link all the good stuff in the description. If you want to go ahead and buy this chip, I'll get my uh, affiliate link in the description so you guys uh, can buy the chip. And that will help me out as well so we can go ahead and work on the next build for you guys we have planned. Uh, definitely subscribe. That helps a lot. Share the video. Like the video. Like us on Facebook, PC Budget Solutions. Um, follow us on Twitter, PCBSPGH. Um, and we also have a Patreon page we just launched as well. Uh, definitely we have a couple of raffles going off there as that starts to take off as well. And I think I have a couple giveaways coming up in the near future. So definitely stick around. So anyway, guys, this is Steve from PC Budget Solutions. Uh, thank you guys very much for taking a look at this video. Share it with everybody that you know that has been looking for this information. And I will see you guys down the road.